Hi, everybody, and uh, hello to those of you who are in the room and those of you who are watching online, either now or at some future date. This is our D2L 101 workshop on creating and uploading content. And I'd just like to mention for those of you that are watching online that just below the video on uh, the web page in front of you, there should be a link that will allow you to sign in. So if you're staff or faculty and you'd like to get some credit for this, by all means, please sign in and let us know that you're here. Okay, just get grab my specs here. And we'll get rid of that. And it would be helpful if I logged into D2L. I'm going to use Firefox today. And logging in eventually. And there's my one class that I'm using for the uh, purposes of talking about talking about things in this uh, in these workshops that we're having. This is my very cool screenwriting 101 class. And if you were here last week or saw last week's presentation, you would have you would have noticed seen all the cool stuff that I've done here with uh, our screenwriting class. Now, as I said, today we're going to be talking about creating and uploading content. Now, that is a huge, huge. Uh, category of, of, of stuff. Content is really everything that you can put into D2L. But what we're going to be concentrating on for today's purposes is stuff that you will find right here in the content outline. Now let's go to it. And you can see I've already done a few things in here. I've already loaded up a couple of, a couple of things that we've, we've talked about last time. This is just a little bit about me. It's uh, uh, more or less a resume. If students are interested and they want to find out why I should be allowed to teach such a class, they can look at this and find out. Uh, I've also loaded something here called uh, the Pyramid of Success, which is in a PDF form, which I'm just going to open up and show you here. It's just a very simple Word document that I took and made into a PDF that students can look at and see uh, the kinds of things that they need to succeed in not only this class, but in the business of screenwriting as well. OK, so I'll get rid of that. And we will get to the business of creating, creating and or uploading some of our own content. Now, the, probably the first uh, and most common way that you're going to be doing this is by uploading documents that you've already made. So I happen to have right here uh, a little. Uh, USB drive in which I've loaded some uh, materials that I would like to put on my uh, fantasy screenwriting course. One of the first things that's kind of important and, and uh, very common is to have in content is a syllabus. So let's upload that syllabus first of all. Now you'll notice that the syllabus is in a Word document right now. Now, you can upload a Word document to D2L without any problems. I recommend that you make it into a PDF and then upload it. In fact, it was just yesterday, as a matter of fact, I had a student come and see me about how do I get, you know, everybody's uploaded a Word, doc, you know, Word documents on D2L. How do I get them if I don't have Word? And the short answer was, you can't. So uh, I told him to speak to his teacher and request that the teacher makes, make some PDFs. Not everybody knows how to do that. If you already know how to do that, please bear with me because we're just going to run through it right here. I thought it would be helpful. So where is it here? We're going to do a save as. And it's, I'm st still calling it the Screenwriting 101 Syllabus. I think I'm going to save it on my desktop just to make it easier for me. And the format is going to be a PDF. OK. That's done. Let's close this out. 
get rid of that for a moment, and make sure that it's actually here on the desktop. And there it is, Screenwriting 101 Syllabus. It's right here. Can we see that? I'll move it. See, there it is. It's over on the side there. So we're going to be dealing with that later. Okay. Now, everything in D2L likes to be nested. And as you go through uh, your D2L site, you'll find that there are slightly different terminologies, or different terms, rather, for how we do that. We, we create a sort of a basket or a folder. Most of the world calls it a folder to put stuff in. Um, in the content section, it's going to be called a module. So what we're going to need is anytime you put something in as content, you need to have a module. So we're going to create a new one, a new module. And I'm going to give it a name. Uh, and I'm just going to call it syllabus. Because I'm, that's all I'm going to have in that, in this one. But you can have many, many things in, in any module. In fact, you can even put modules within modules. And you'll notice right here it says uh, parent module. So I, I could put this module inside another module. And I have a couple already. I have the About Me and the Success modules already here. And if I wanted to, I could put this module within those modules and then add items add items that way. So you can look at it as though a module is a kind of book. And maybe you have books within the books, or chapters within the, the books, and then you have articles within the chapters. Okay? But we're going to create a new one specifically for this. And I'll give it the highly original name of Syllabus. And I'll save it. And when I come back here to Content Outline, Okay, I will see the new module listed there. And I've misspelled it, but um, we know what I'm talking about. Um, you'll notice on the other modules, there's, there's a link here that's in blue. Here it says About Me, My Info. That's in blue. That's, that's a link. I would click on that to open it. We've already seen, seen that happen. Success. Click on that to open it. But you'll notice here Syllabus doesn't have one of those little blue links below it. And that's the thing that we're going to do next. And I will create a new topic. A topic goes inside a module. And a module can go inside another module, or it can go in the class. And you'll notice up here at the top, under Content Items, it'll say Screenwriting 101, which is like the big module. It's the class, everything that's in the class. OK? But we're going to create a new topic. And you, you'll see here that it gives you a number of choices. Create new file, course file, upload a new file, or a quick link. OK. Now, a quick, uh, now the, um, we're going to go with upload a new file, because we've already got the PDF file that's on the, it's on the page. And I suspect that'll probably be the one that is most commonly used. So I'm going to upload a new file. Now it's asking me to choose the module. Okay, now remember we just created syllabus. So that's going to be the module. And now I'm going to put in syllabus here because that's the name of the topic or the document that I'm uploading in this case. And I'm spelling it correctly. And I can go over here. Let's see. That's the new one. Now you'll notice right below that, Right here it says content. And it, as there's a space here that says file to upload. So I'm going to tell it to browse, and it's going to look through my computer for documents that I can, that I can upload here. Let's see if it lists my, oh, there it is. And that's my USB drive screenwriting class that has the materials for this class in it. So I'm going to choose that one. Oh, but remember, I didn't, I didn't put it back in there. I put it on the desktop. So let's come here to the desktop. And I've got my Screenwriting 101 syllabus in PDF form. And I'm going to upload that. Click Open. Save it. And let's take a look at the content outline and see if it showed up. Keep your fingers crossed, everybody. There it is. Okay. 
Now, there's, there are other ways. Let's create a new, another new module and look at another way to upload or to create uh, some content for you. And we're not going to put it in, in another module. We're going to leave that none. Let's just call this one, I don't know, other cool stuff. And save it. I want to go back to content outline to check to make sure it's there. And sure enough, there it is. We're going to put a new topic in it. Okay. Now, I think that I would like for my screenwriting students to be inspired by other successful screenwriters. So I think I'm going to create my own new topic, and I'm going to be using um, the online editor for this one. So I've got a couple of different sources that I'm pulling from, and I'm putting this all together in, in one place. Okay. We'll call this screenwriter quotes. That's okay. We don't hear it. <laughs> where, is it, where is it here? Properties. This is the new topic. Okay. Choose a module. I have to choose a module for it. Putting it in other cool stuff. And now, down here where it says content, you'll see something. It's a little bit dim on my screen. I'm looking at it from a bad angle. But you'll see the HTML editor. And you can just start writing in here. Uh, or you can, you can add other kinds of media. So I think what I'm going to do is just treat it, like, treat it like I'm treating a Word document. I'm going to center this. And now I'm going to add a picture. Okay. Now the picture I want to put in there is back on my... USB drive. So I'm going to tell it to browse. See if I find it. There's the screenwriting class. Did I put the? Oh, it's that very. Yeah, it's complicated. I think. Is that it? Oh, I think that's the one. I'm going to open that up. I hope that's the. I forgot to label these correctly. So forgive me if this looks to be something weird. But anyway. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to upload it. I'm just going to call it, uh, I'm just going to say this image is decorative because that's all it is. It's not, oh, it's the wrong one. How do you like that? Okay, let me get rid of it. Well, this is a good exercise. I can show you what you do if you get rid of, if you need to get rid of something. It's gone. All I did was position the cursor uh, to the right of it, just like I'm erasing text. And then I hit delete, and it went away. Okay. Now, so let's go back, and we'll find, uh, we'll find the other picture. It must have been, that's odd. It must have been this one. Keep your fingers crossed again. It's just decorative. There it is. Now, you may recognize that. That is uh, the late, great screenwriter, Nora Ephron, who passed away recently. And below it, I think I want to put a quote. So you'll notice that the cursor is positioned right here in this lower uh, right-hand corner. Okay? So I'll hit Return. And because I've got my text centered, that goes right to the center of the page. Okay. Now, what I want to put under there is a quote that I have from her. So let's go here, and I've got that saved on a Word document. And she says, wow, that's weird. That is not at all the, the font that I wanted to use. Oh, I know why. That font isn't available on this one. So I'm going to change the font. And the reason I'm doing this is to remind my students that whenever they type a screenplay, they're going to want to use a courier-type font. That is the industry standard. It looks like that old typewriter font. 
And the reason they do that is so that producers, directors, um, agents, anybody who deals with scripts can estimate the length of a script because they know how many words can fit on a page using this particular font. So throughout the, throughout the website, or throughout the D2L site, I like to use this font to, to sort of get the students used to seeing it and make them feel like they're part of the in crowd and this is what we do in the business. We use this font. Okay, now I have a couple of choices at this point about how I want to load this in here. For example, I can simply copy the whole thing. and put it in there. Or if I wanted to, get rid of it, I could type it. What does she say? She says, so if you're writing something that's, that's is original, that's on your own, and you're just, you're just talking about it in your own voice, you could just, you could just uh, type it in there like this. I, what does she say? I write, I try to write parts for women. Okay. Let's see if I can drag it in there. I think it should work. From one document. Just pull it right on in there. Yeah, there you go. I try to write parts for women. Uh, that are as complicated and interesting as women actually are. This is good advice for any screenwriter. Write parts for children that are as complicated and interesting. Write parts for men. Write parts for aliens. Write parts for doc talking dogs. And that's why I chose that one. So let's save it. Okay, we'll go back to course content outline. And there it is. And that's what students will see when they open it. OK. Now, we've said that everything here in, on, in content that we're going to be talking about today is listed here under the content outline. But that's kind of hidden. So I want to show you some other options that you have. Okay, and this is a widget that I created uh, last week where I talk about me. Now you'll notice there's some information about me. And I've chosen to give this a very stern looking do your homework or don't come to class, don't you dare come to class without, you know, unprepared kind of a look. But I've clicked on this and it takes me to my info and you'll notice that there's a downloadable box that pops up. So it's, uh, we're going to open it with Microsoft Word. And there it is. That is something. Now, this is sort of my resume. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, you may remember. Um, it's got my office hours. It's got some contact information here. And it's got a link here so that when the students, uh, so the student needs to email me, they simply click on the link. And then their email, sh you know, if it's like most computers, their email will pop up and they'll, they'll be able to come and talk to me. Okay, so this is an example of some content uh, that can actually go away, uh, that can actually show up on the course home page. Okay, so you saw this here, you saw this right here. That's the About Me widget. If you go and look under Content Outline, there it is. Same deal. And it pops up. Okay. This, so I might take, I might take uh, that Nora Ephron quote that we just saw with the picture on it, and I might create a widget that will link to that if I think it's important. So I might, every week, I might have some new uh, quote from some screenwriter, and maybe next week it'll be Charlie Kaufman or uh, Diablo Cody or you know somebody else that has some cool quote, and that'll serve to inspire the students. And every time that they come on to uh, th their 
course home page, they'll see something new and cool that they can relate to and they will find inspiring and interesting. And that'll sort of welcome them in and sort of make them look forward to going to D2L. Okay, there's another way that I want to, another thing that I want to show you. Uh, and that is another widget called Browse the Content Outline. D2L likes to provide students different ways of getting into anything on the, anything on the course, which is, can be confusing, but it can also be helpful. Now, this Browse the Content Outline comes standard when you order your, D, your brand new 2012 D2L course. It'll come with a home page, and this Browse the Content Outline will be on that home page. Uh, you, can, you can move it around, you can leave it there, or you can get rid of it entirely if you find that it's too confusing. I think it's positioned in a great place. It's center, it's, a, it's toward the bottom, you keep it towards the bottom, and students can see what's in there without, without having to go and open up this content outline um, box here. They can stay right on the course home. They can stay right on the course home page. Okay, let's go back into the content outline and just look at it for a minute about some new new stuff, uh, so, some other things. So we've got this other cool stuff module here. And so let's just we want to put something in there. We've already done. Uh, to create a new file. We did that with our Nora Ephron quote. We uploaded a new file uh, from, uh, uh, we've uploaded a new file that's already on the computer. Let's look at a quick link too. Okay. Choo we're going to choose a module. We're going to do other cool stuff. Title. Um, we're just going to call this IMDB. IMDB is the source for quick information about the movies throughout the entire history of movie making. It goes all the way back to, you know, 1910 or whatever. And I'm going to put that in there. I hope I've gotten this right. Okay, it says it is saved successfully. Let's go check in content outline. And there, under other cool stuff, we've got an IMDB. Let's see if I got it right. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And it opens up in a new page there. Let's get rid of it. And go back to course home. Check here. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't show up there. What it gives you here is just the modules, which is more at a glance than you might see here. But if you want to open up and see individual topics, you have to click on it, and that'll give you the screenwriter quotes. There's Nora. Or it'll give you IMDb. Oh, look at that! It doesn't. It doesn't open it in a different page, it, or it opens it right in that same page. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions about this? I know you walked in a little bit late, but we can go over whatever you need to, because we got plenty of time. Okay, that, that is going to be something that, that uh, I think only you can, let's, let's put it in and see. I, I could be wrong. I think that's just uh, sort of code for the, for the instructor. Let's, uh, let's, let's do another one. Oh, I, I know what I want to do. I want to show you some, an, just a, something else here. Right, right. Uh, the, the question was uh, in reference to 
um, a short title box that we saw, and we're going to explore that right now. Let's do a new topic. And I want to upload a new file. And I'm going to call this Winslow and the Emperor, because I want to load up a screenplay that I've written so my students can go in, they can check things like um, format, they check to see how I've done stuff, and to find out if I'm for real and I really know how to write a screenplay. Okay, so let's put this in short title. We'll call it, whoops, let's do that, uh, Winslow. And there is my Winslow and the Emperor PDF, which I'm going to put up there. Okay. And we're going to save it. Select a Oh, I didn't select a module. I thought I did that. I guess not. Other cool stuff. Okay. Saved successfully. You see down here in the corner. Let's go back to content outline. There it is. And there it is. Okay, so look under other cool stuff. Winslow and the Emperor. Now, another reason that I wanted to upload this for, for today is to show you that this is a 110 page screenplay. It's about 20,000 words. And so this is, it's not, it's not a novel. You know, it's not 60 or 100,000 words, but it's a good-sized novel of, of, I think it's, or a good-sized work of about, I don't know, 180K. And it's, it's in a PDF form, and it's asking me if we want to open it. Yes. And there it is. Oh, look at that. And it even, I, I didn't even know it was going to do that. That is so cool that it did that. It copied um, the list of scenes throughout the, throughout the entire script. And you can see, here we are, we're on page two there. And it goes all the way down to page 110. Okay, now, the question is, where do we see, it just says Winslow right here. Okay, so that's where it says Winslow. course home. Let's have a look at it and see if that's what the students see. I'll bet it is. And I'm changing my role to the student. Change role. Yeah, okay, there it is. Okay. Any other questions? No. Yeah, uh, I you know I don't think I don't know of anybody that uses them, but you can see where it shows up there. And if you want to, if you know, if if you want to use it as an organizational uh, tool, I think the best thing is to is to create modules within modules, you know, you know, and then put the topics within you know, sort of sub-modules that are nested within the larger modules. And you can do that ad infinitum. You just create module after module, and, you know, you can have a whole sort of tree, you know, family tree of, you know, stuff. I, I don't know what Kevin does. Uh, the, the question was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the question was about regarding video on on D2L. The there are a couple of ways to do that. The way we recommend doing it, and I don't know how Kevin does it, um, but is to post something on on 
uh, YouTube and then link to it. And that's the easiest and, and simplest way of doing that. And we, um, we do have instructions on that, and I believe there will be. Jory, can you hear me? Jory's not in the room. Um, okay. Will we be doing a, a D2L 101 course on videos? Yeah, okay. So, if, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the answer was uh, we're going to be doing one in November after this particular sequence of classes, specifically on uh, video in, in YouTube, Embed. embedding YouTube into your D2L site. It's a, it's a very handy, very cool thing to, to see, too. There's some options with that. But you can, do, you can use some of, the, some of the, the techniques that we've looked at today, uh, you know, by, you know, you, you could put a video link in your content, or you could you could put it in a widget on your home page if you like to, and there are different ways of you know if you don't want it on the home page you want it somewhere else and so you know because you you've got a limited amount of real estate on your screen you can you can hide it in the content, well not hide it but you can stash it there. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. These these go up and they are they are available and we will be referencing people to them. They'll be more or less permanently archived, uh, and those are available. Let's see, Sac City Online, Jory. Yes, yeah, Sac City Online, Sac City hyphen online. Dot org slash DE. And maybe I'll just put it up here to show you where, where it can be found. There it is right there. Yes. Yes, yeah, the question is is can widget size and location be adjusted? And yes, within within certain limitations. Um, there are three columns on your home page. Let's just have a look quick look at the home page to answer that question. There are you'll notice that there are three columns here. Now, you can choose the the width of the column. And that gives that gives you some choice. You can put a widget in any one of those columns, and you can adjust the you know. I mean, some people have very very small columns, and you know, you know, on, on the side, very you know, big one in the middle, or something like that. Um, and it it it's a, it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes the information and the image that you put on there will demand a certain amount of of real estate, and so you'll have to adjust that so that the computer you know so that D2L can, can work with it. But that's really pretty easy. But our, our, we're going to be talking about widgets at some later date. Correct, Jory? Yeah. So we'll learn all about that then. Okay. And where is, Jory, can you tell me where this one is going to be? Like, these will be located here? There they are. Okay. And they're not, uh, yeah, there they are. It, it's going to be under that category, archived workshops. Okay. So you go to, you go to this page, assistance with D2L, and um, archived workshops is where you'll find this. Uh, as long as we're here, let's, let's just, and we've got some time, let's just take a look at some of these things. The on-demand on video tutorials it takes you to, wet, to uh, YouTube, and you've got just all kinds of stuff here. So if you have a question, that page is a good place to go. 
this is probably the first place that you want to go on that. And, and look through around here. See if you can find what, what you need to uh, what you need to find to help you create your class or solve your problem. And here's another interesting thing that's kind of important that we want to get everybody used to using. Uh, the request assistance from SEC staff. So, if you can't find the answer that you're looking for on this page or in those videos or in the workshops like this one, and you really need to talk to us, here's the place to go. Request assistance from SCC staff. And what will happen here is you'll be presented with a page. And I want to call your particular attention to this section right here. Open a new support ticket. And you click on that. You fill out your information. Describe in as much reasonable detail as you can uh, what your problem is, maybe what you've tried to, to, how you've tried to solve it, and then you can submit the ticket. And then instantly, well not instantly, but as soon as we, as soon as we look at it, <laughs> um, we will be able to, we'll, we'll see a, a place where this is, uh, you know, that, all that message appears and we'll be able to communicate with you through that site. Very handy to know. Okay, Jory, have I forgotten anything? Is there something I should cover? Okay, so there you have it. Uploading and creating content. So you want to remember, use PDFs whenever possible, and you can use photos as, as PDFs or if you want. Some, some of the things that I do, that you'll notice this top this top header here, I created that in Photoshop. Oh, that, that image across the top. That was all created in Photoshop. And then I exported it as a, as a, as a PNG. So that, uh, what's that? Um, that's the way we try and present it. I mean, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, though. Uh, quite, have a lot more, so. Yeah, the que question is how many students and teachers. I don't have those numbers in my head, but it's a lot. So. Okay, are we done? Because we got you know we got minutes. You can you can assault me with all kinds of questions here, what's but you don't have to. What's next week? Except the things that I don't know. <laughs> you know, question. but. What you will get, you will get something on Monday in your email that'll that'll say what it is next week. My class doesn't get out until Christmas, so 